Greetings, my fellow women of St. Lucia. I am delighted for this opportunity to address you on the occasion of International Women's Day. I would like to wish a happy International Women's Day to all and trust that it will be a day not only of celebration, but one of critical reflection as we together look at where we have come from and where we still have to go. For more than a hundred years, this day has been observed all over the world, but it was not until 1977 that the United Nations recognized it and started celebrating it as we now do. International Women's Day is dedicated to honoring the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women, to spread awareness among the people regarding women's rights and the gender equality. It is also to encourage women everywhere that no hurdles can stop them from accomplishing their dreams. This year, International Women's Day finds us, as indeed the rest of the world, still battling the coronavirus pandemic that continues to wreak havoc everywhere, 15 months after it first made its appearance. It is therefore most relevant and timely that the theme for this year's observance is women in leadership, achieving an equal future in a COVID-19 world. We are once again given the opportunity to celebrate the tremendous efforts by women around the world, and especially right here in St. Lucia, in shaping the fight and ultimate recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a tremendous sacrifice that women are making putting their own lives on the line. And we, as a country, need to show appreciation. By now, everyone knows that from day one, women all over the world have been in the heat of this battle, working relentlessly and over very long hours to keep populations safe. They are frontline and health sector workers, scientists, doctors, emergency personnel and caregivers. Yet, as is shown, they get paid 11% less globally than their male counterparts. An analysis of COVID-19 task teams from 87 countries found only 3.5% of women had gender parity. Women's full and effective participation and leadership in all areas of life drive progress for everyone. Yet, they are still underrepresented in public life and decision making. In fact, a recent report of the United Nations Secretary General stated that women are heads of state or government in only 22 of the nearly 200 countries in the world, and only 25% of national parliamentarians are women. At this current rate of progress, gender equality among heads of government will take another 130 years. The fact is, when women lead, we see positive results. Some of the most efficient and exemplary responses to the COVID-19 pandemic were led by women. And women, especially young women, are at the forefront of diverse and inclusive movements for social justice, climate change, and equality in all parts of the world. This is why this year's International Women's Day is a rallying cry for generation equality, to act for an equal future for all. The world is moving towards achieving gender balance, towards equality for both men and women. The change is something that is needed and essential. For ages, men have been more privileged in every sphere of society. The need that needs to change because we are all human beings and we should all get equal rights and opportunities. But change is coming and we in St. Lucia have been witnesses to it, not only in our own country, but in some of the biggest bastions of gender inequality in our hemisphere. Only weeks ago, we saw history made in the United States with the inauguration of the first woman vice president Kamala Harris. <clears throat> it was a long time coming, but now it is done. So what of St. Lucia? 
how are women faring in this Helen of the West? I think we have to be fair to ourselves to admit that somewhere along the way we have dropped the ball. <clears throat> there was a time long ago when we had in St. Lucia a vibrant women's association. Although it lacked the clout and verve of present day women's organization in terms of advocacy, operating as it did in a different environment to what we have today. It nevertheless stayed around for decades. Later, we had a business and professional women's club, but that too faded away. Today, we have various women's groups operating in our country, in political organizations, in churches, in the agriculture sector and elsewhere. There was a time when International Women's Day was nationally celebrated with great fanfare, with rallies, award ceremonies, and social functions, but no more. More and more women are rising to positions of leadership in both the public and private sectors, breaking down barriers and achieving high levels of excellence. There are now more women in our parliament than ever before, although still not enough. On the downside, there are growing problems that have to be addressed. Women still face discrimination in the workplace and are targets of sexual harassment and abuse, again in the workplace. We are reminded ever so often that incidents of domestic violence targeted at women are still widespread. Government departments charged with the responsibility of looking after women's affairs are unable to adequately cope with the workload because they are understaffed and underfinanced. A little over a year ago, before the pandemic, St. Lucia hosted an international forum. The aim of the organizations was to ensure that domestic laws and policies to combat violence against women have impact in the home, at work, and in the community, and are within the grasp of every woman, no matter her race, ethnic origin, economic status, or educational background. It is my understanding that there are initiatives being planned that involve the enactment of new legislation to remedy those ills, and we wait for its enactment. I am acutely aware that at this time, our women are being severely impacted by the negative consequences of the pandemic, not only as a result of illness and maybe death of loved ones, but equally by the loss of opportunity being experienced, especially by those who are self-employed, whose businesses are floundering or have closed. Others have been casualties of layoffs, and there are the single mothers who are required to work and still supervise their children who are receiving virtual schooling. These are tough times, but our women are facing. But all this speaks to the need in our country for a vibrant women's organization or movement to continue to advocate, to keep issues involving and impacting women on the front burner. It is also imperative that women remain focused and vigilant, lest the, grain, the gains that we have fought hard for over so many years for justice, respect, and equality begin to be eroded. Women everywhere want and should have a future free from stigma, stereotypes, and violence. A future that's sustainable, peaceful, with equal rights and opportunities for all. To achieve that agenda, women need to be present wherever decisions are being made. We cannot be passive or show disinterest. In recent years, women all over the world have been recording decisive victories against inequality and injustice. Four years ago, the Me Too movement was started in the United States against experiences of harassment and sexual assault. It has now grown into a global phenomenon which continues to highlight unacceptable and inappropriate behavior and has led to many high profile convictions. It shows that results can be had if we persevere relentlessly. So on this International Women's Day, I challenge all the women of St. Lucia to take on the roles of leadership and begin to pull all resources 
and mobilize. Let this International Women's Day be a rallying cry to influence, encourage, and inspire the positive and much needed changes that we want to see in our country. A happy International Women's Day to all.